Everybody, there's a lot of discussion on how you should stroke your putt. Should you have an arcing stroke where the face opens, comes back to square, and then closes? Should you have an in-plane stroke where your putter head moves on the shaft plane? Or should you have a straight back and straight through stroke? Today, I'm gonna to go over all three and try to help you determine which one of those you should use. to as they go through their putting routine and for some especially if you've had some trouble with your putting stroke and as I mentioned in the intro you have one where the, the it's a gating stroke where your forearms are going to uh, supinate and pronate as they go back and through or at least that's how it's been taught uh, to many golfers throughout the past if there's an issue with that it is highly reliant on timing and in particular if you have the ball position set in a different spot it could really wreak havoc on your release patterns uh, a lot of people will try to have the ball position the same and rely on their uh, good touch and feel, but they tend to have sporadic uh, days on and off of putting. They'll go through streaks where they make everything, and then they'll go through longer streaks where they don't make anything. So the, the gating approach where the face opens and then comes back to square and closes is probably the least desirable, at least in my opinion, based off the research that I've done, because again, it is too highly reliant on timing. The second type of stroke would be an in-plane stroke. And what I have here is a plane trainer. For many of you out there in the golfing world, you've probably used one of these, but I'm sure you've probably seen one somewhere on the golf course. And if you're gonna use one of these, the first thing I recommend is that the plane of the swing planer, okay? So the angle that this vertical portion sits off of horizontal, that that match your uh, angle or your lie angle of your putter okay if you want your putter to stay in plane with the shaft that is very very important so for example if you have a 71 degree lie putter and you have a 73 degree lie plane trainer you're going to actually be working against yourself to to large extent so if you have for example this is mine this putter is set at 73 degree lie angle this plane trainer is also 73 degrees so if i wanted to train my putter to move in plane with my shaft that would be uh, much more conducive to doing so. But there is a problem that you can have with an in-plane stroke. And I have, I'll bring in a second camera here in just a second. Let me get this back down. So I have my orange stick here for my alignment to allow me to put the ball in the same place. So I'll put the back of the ball, for example, at the middle of my stance and the ball will be very close to under the left side uh, or my left or target side eye. But again, as you keep the, the uh, club moving in plane because it's on the plane trainer the putter does move in an arc and I want to illustrate that with the camera behind me so if I move this alignment stick to straight down that target line like this okay and I were to move this putter and keep the back end of it on that plane trainer you can see from this camera line that that center uh, or the sweet spot of that putter has moved inside that target line so it does have a uh, an arcing component to it. It's not, the face is not rotating open, the face is staying square to the plane, but it is moving on an arc. And if there is a problem when it moves on an arc, even though it's in plane, it's that you're highly susceptible to ball position. And if ball position is back a little too much, you're gonna catch the putter moving on a path and, and direction that is not down your target line, whether it's too far back or too far forward, it's gonna cause you to miss putts or try to do something compensatory to make up for the distance, or I'm sorry, for the difference. So an in-plane stroke, which has become very popular, can be very good, okay? It can help you to get your putt started online if you can maintain almost an identical ball position. It doesn't have to be as close as it would be with a gating stroke, but again, it is very susceptible to the putter moving inside the line on the backstroke, even though it's in-plane, and you can see it comes back down to impact, and as it exits, the, the sweet spot or the center point of the putter moves inside the target line once again. So what I most highly recommend is that you do a, your arms work more in a straight back and straight through method. More so coming in, in impact than on the backstroke. So on the backstroke, you can, the putter can move anywhere you want it to, but for three inches, prior to impact and for approximately six inches beyond impact, that putter should be moving very straight down that line. Depends on who you talk to, what engineer and biomechanic, mechanist, but you are going to swing on somewhere between a six and a nine foot 
uh, diameter or a radius, meaning you're going to have a tangent point of the bottom of the arc of the putter that is going to be very level to the ground for an extended period of time, approximately nine inches. So if you're going to do more of an, uh, a straight arm, straight back and through stroke, so to speak, you're able to do that most consistently, most often the putter face stay, has more stability staying straight down the target line for a longer period of time, so you're not as heavily reliant on your ball position. So I'm gonna take you up to where we can, I'll give you a little exercise that you can do at home, uh, but we're gonna go over to where I've got a wall that I can illustrate that. Hey everybody, thank you for watching another one of our videos. I hope you found some of the things that I discussed in here useful. If you have and you tried it and you had some success, we'd love to hear about it. So now that we've gone over the three various types of putting stroke, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, it's ideal for the putter from three inches prior to impact to, and then six inches past for the putter to be moving in a straight line based off the radius, the six foot radius that the putter swings on. Here's how you can practice it in your house at your office, wherever you want to practice. Uh, what I have here, this is very inexpensive. This is a just a little longer than a three foot piece of PVC pipe that is about a half an inch in diameter and then I've got a three foot bungee cord attached to it. So what I'd like to see you do is you find a doorway just like this. If you have one in your house, of course, that makes it a lot easier. You're going to put the bungee cord around you with the PVC pipe on the front of your body and then obviously you can't walk through the doorway or it's going to run into it, which is exactly what you want to. So you're going to place the putter inside the door jam, and you're going to get the PVC pipe as close to the door, if not touching, as you can. And what you want to do is make sure that when you swing, that it's an arm swing, and or if your shoulders are moving at all, they're moving up and down without running into the door. So if you did it incorrectly, where your shoulders are rotating and the gate, the putting stroke gates too much, you would hit it on the forward, and you'd also hit it that going this way. So your shoulders are rotating too much. What you'd like to have happen is this moves up and down and never touches this throughout the entire stroke, something like this. Okay, so those are three ways that you can putt. Get yourself uh, a PVC pipe, half inch in diameter, three foot long piece of bungee cord. Go into your door jam in your house, your office, or wherever. Practice your putting without having this hit the wall and you will see that your putting and the ability to make putts consistently goes up and your scores go down.